This program provides education, not advice. Sponsors pay a fee for endorsements and interviews. See the truthayf.com disclosure page for details. This is where technology, innovation, and personal finance come together. This is the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. Brought to you by Global X ETFs, dedicated to providing investors with unexplored intelligent solutions, and by Invesco QQQ. Anyone can become an agent of innovation with Invesco QQQ, Invesco Distributors Inc. It's Tuesday, May 2nd. Last week, SEC Chair Gary Gensler posted a short video about crypto on his Twitter account. He uses cute animation in it. First of all, I think it says something pretty important about society and technology when senior government officials decide to make major policy statements on social media. That would have been like John F. Kennedy placing a full-page ad in the New York Times. I don't think that would have ever happened. But I digress. It really doesn't matter so much where Gensler posted his message. What's important here is what he said about crypto. I'm going to play for you his entire message. It's pretty short, less than four minutes. And then I'm going to give you my reaction to his comments. So here is Gary Gensler. What do the securities laws have to do with goldfish? Many places around the country, we're required to use a leash when you walk your dog. Well, let's just say you get stopped because you're walking Rover unleashed. What do you think would happen if you told the police officer that Rover is actually a goldfish? You'd still get a citation, and that's because the law cares about what something actually is not what you call it. Well, the same thing is true in the securities markets. As Justice Thurgood Marshall put it so well, Congress's purpose in enacting the securities laws was to regulate investments in whatever form they are made and by whatever name they are called. That's why Congress's definition of securities includes more than 30 items, such as stocks, bonds, notes, and something called investment contracts. An investment contract exists when you invest money in a common enterprise with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. Intermediaries for investment contracts, whether they're exchanges, brokers, dealers, clearinghouses, they need to comply with the securities laws and register with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Instead, many crypto platforms are just pretending that these investment contracts that they offer are more like goldfish. And the lack of compliance by these crypto platforms means that you don't have basic investor protections. These are things like rule books and surveillance to prevent fraud manipulation or appropriate custody and yes, segregation of customer assets so they don't get misused or abused or simply become the property of the platform, especially if it goes into bankruptcy. And you lack basic protections as customers that you aren't just trading against the house. Further, many of these crypto platforms combine the activities of an exchange, broker dealer, and clearinghouse under the same roof. And when a platform doesn't register these functions, that puts investors like you at risk. When a platform combines these functions, that creates conflicts of interest that undermine our time-tested investor protections. Crypto markets suffer from a lack of regulatory compliance. It's not a lack of regulatory clarity. As we alleged in a recent action, one crypto platform executive knew the law so well that he actually advised issuers to scrub specific language from their web pages in an effort to pretend that their tokens weren't investment contracts. You could say, in other words, they tried to say that their dogs were goldfish. It doesn't matter if you call yourself onshore or offshore. If you make securities available to American investors, you must comply with American laws. The law is clear. 
If you're a securities exchange, clearinghouse, broker, or dealer, you must come into compliance, register with us, and deal with conflicts of interest and disclose important information. For 90 years, these laws have helped protect investors like you. You might say, they're an investor's best friend. Okay, let me provide comments to you about some of the things that SEC Chair Gary Gensler just tweeted. Here's one sentence I want to highlight. What do you think would happen if you told the police officer that Rover is actually a goldfish? First of all, the issue of crypto regulation is extremely important. And I find Gary Gensler's metaphor of cartoonishly comparing a dog to a goldfish rather condescending and insulting. Crypto is a trillion-dollar asset class. 22% of U.S. adults own Bitcoin. 81% of institutional investors say digital assets should be a part of a diversified portfolio. Blockchain-related companies employ tens of thousands of people throughout the U.S. in high-paying jobs. Hundreds of prominent Wall Street executives, attorneys, former government officials have all left their positions to embark on careers in the crypto field. It is, after all, the first new asset class in 170 years. And to deride their professionalism with a childish reference to Rover and Goldfish? That's a demeaning attempt to trivialize an incredibly important conversation. Crypto is a global technology, and we need serious people to engage. Whether they're exchanges, brokers, dealers, clearinghouses, they need to comply with the securities laws and register with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The chairman is exactly correct about this. Everybody who's involved in the sale or activity of securities must comply with all securities laws and must register with the SEC. And that's exactly what all the professionally run companies in the crypto community have been trying to do. More than a dozen companies have filed dozens of applications with the SEC to register their funds. And every time, including twice in the past two weeks, the SEC has rejected their registration application. You want to know why there's no Bitcoin ETF? The SEC keeps saying no. So SEC Chair Gary Gensler can't have it both ways. He can't criticize crypto companies for not registering when he's the person who's refusing to let them register. The lack of compliance by these crypto platforms means that you don't have basic investor protections. Again, that's correct. But again, it's his fault. If he wants to provide investor protection, then he needs to let these companies register. Last year, Axie Infinity was hacked, and investors lost $625 million. Did the SEC prevent that? Did it get any of the money back for any of those investors? Did the SEC protect anyone when Terra Luna collapsed last year, wiping out $60 billion? How about when the crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital failed, losing half a billion? Where was the SEC then? Or how about when Voyager Digital, or Celsius, or BlockFi, or, wait for it, FTX all collapsed. Gensler and other SEC officials had meetings with Sam Bankman-Fried, but the SEC did nothing to protect investors. Instead, we get a Twitter video about Goldfish. Many of these crypto platforms combine the activities of an exchange, broker-dealer, and clearinghouse under the same roof. And when a platform doesn't register these functions, that puts investors like you at risk. Absolutely right, Gary. So why doesn't the SEC create rules to prohibit this? Why isn't the SEC working with Congress to create new laws to govern the crypto market, just like Congress passed laws governing the stock market and the bond market? It's not a lack of regulatory clarity. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, but yes, it is. Two years ago, Coinbase asked the SEC for permission to become a publicly traded company. Coinbase filed a registration application. It told the SEC that it was in the business of letting investors buy and sell digital assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and dozens of other coins and tokens. Coinbase is a crypto exchange, and Gary Gensler said yes. And so Coinbase is now the largest publicly traded crypto exchange in the U.S., 
But then Gary Gensler started saying that some coins should be registered as securities. So Coinbase went back to the SEC, spending millions of dollars in legal fees to get regulatory clarity on which coins are securities and which are not, which coins need to register and which don't. Coinbase says that its executives have met with the SEC more than 30 times over the past nine months. This past December, Coinbase asked the SEC for clarity, and so far, five months later, the SEC has refused to provide a response. How can Gary Gensler say with a straight face that there's regulatory clarity when he knows there isn't any? Listen to this quick video clip. This is Gary Gensler testifying just two weeks ago before the House Financial Services Committee. The person asking the questions is Patrick McHenry, the chairman of the committee. And the person he's talking to is SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Ether is one of the um, most popular digital assets and powers of the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, back in 2018, then SEC Corporation Finance Director Bill Hinman uh, stated that he believed Ether was not a security. Last month, CFTC Chair uh, Benham expressed his view that Ether is a commodity. The State Attorney General of New York asserted in a court filing last month that Ether is a security. Clearly, an asset cannot be both a commodity and a security. Do you agree? Um, I. I it, actually, all securities are commodity under the Commodity and Exchange Act. It's that we are excluded commodities. But I would agree that a security cannot be also an excluded commodity and an included commodity. I'm sorry, Chair, just to talk about the Commodity Exchange Act more precisely. Okay, so do you recognize, uh, how would you categorize Ether then? Look, I think that the general sweep of what Congress did, not just in the 30s, but as amended I'm asking here. you, sitting in your chair now to make an assessment under the laws as exist, is Ether a commodity or a security? Without speaking to any one. I know you've okay, repeatedly said you're not going to speak to one, except you've spoken to one, Bitcoin. So I'm asking you to speak to a second one, the second largest market cap here. And speaking to the tokens, there's 10 to 12,000. If there's a group of entrepreneurs in the I'm asking middle, about the one. public is anticipating a profit based on the... I'm asking a specific question, Chair Gensler. I said this in private. This should be no shock to you I'm asking this question. Is Ether a commodity or a security? And again, it depends on the facts and the law, and if there's a group of individuals... I'm asking about the, the facts middle. and the law sitting in your seat and the judgment you are making. And so, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I think you, you would not want me to prejudge because I'm also... But you have aware. prejudged on this. You've taken, you've taken 50 enforcement actions. We're finding out as we go, as you file suit, as people get Wells notices on what is a security in your view, in your agency's view. I'm asking you a very simple question about the second largest digital asset. What is your view? And my view is, is if there's a group of individuals in the middle, middle that the public is anticipating... All right, so let me just ask a second question. Then. Do you think it serves the market for an object to be, to be viewed by the commodities regulator as a commodity and the securities regulator to be viewed as a security? Do you think that provides uh, safety and soundness for the product? Do you think it provides consumer protection? Do you, see, do you think it serves the value of innovation? I think no should be a very simple answer for you here. I think that uncertainty is bad, is it not? And I think that Congress has said that there's one agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under this committee. And you won't answer my question, and you're the head of that agency. So give me a break. Come on. I'm answering it in the generic because you would not want me to speak about any one set of facts and circumstance. This is how Gensler behaved throughout the entire five-hour hearing. He refused to answer questions, he obfuscated, he dodged, he evaded. He refused to answer direct questions, despite the fact that he claims there is regulatory clarity. If there is clarity, why couldn't he provide the clarity upon direct questioning by members of Congress of both parties? Let's return to Gensler's Twitter video. Here's his final comment in that video. For 90 years, these laws have helped protect investors like you. You might say, they're an investor's best friend. Yes, indeed, 
The securities laws do protect investors. But today's SEC is failing to do that because it's failing to provide the rules that the crypto community has been asking for for years. Congress is so furious about Gensler's performance that a bill's been introduced to fire him. If Gary Gensler has his way, innovation in this emerging technology will be stifled in the U.S. Companies will simply move overseas. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong has already said he'll do just that. He'll move the company to London, where British officials are welcoming him with open arms. Gary Gensler can't kill crypto, but he can harm American investors and damage American economic leadership in the world. You need to contact your elected representatives in Washington and tell them to pass the laws we need to foster development of this technology while simultaneously protecting U.S. investors. We can do both. We've done it in stocks, in pharmaceuticals, in auto safety, in agriculture, in dozens of industries. We don't need to ban technology. We just need rules to govern it. That's how we maintain our global leadership That's how we help everyday investors achieve financial security. I encourage you to go watch Gary Gensler's Twitter video and read some of the 4,000 comments, virtually all of them horribly negative against that video and Gary Gensler's behavior. His behavior is bad for America. He's ultimately going to fail. And the sooner Congress puts him in his place, the better for all of us. If you'd like to learn the truth about crypto, Read my Amazon number one bestseller, The Truth About Crypto, or better yet, get your certificate in blockchain and digital assets, a brand new course for consumers and investors. Learn about that at my sister company, DACFP.com. The link is in the show notes. See you tomorrow. The Truth About Your Future is sponsored by Global X ETFs. Listeners of this program enjoy fresh perspectives on the financial topics that matter most especially the rise of exponential technologies. And right now, there may be no faster-moving tech story than the rise of artificial intelligence. But despite some exciting new developments, like the launch of ChatGPT, we are only beginning to scratch the surface of AI's potential. So which companies will have staying power? As an investor, it's hard to know, which is why GlobalX ETFs specializes in thematic investing strategies that harness the potential of numerous companies involved in an emerging trend, all in a single trade. Explore our investment approach along with our latest research on the emergence of AI at globalxetfs.com slash insights. Cutting edge investment information delivered in plain English. This is the truth about your future with Rick Edelman. 